So this is a Ponagachi. And much like its name is a play on words of the craze of the 90s, the Tamagotchi, which became very popular, the Ponagachi is a simple little Raspberry Pi W device, and it is in a 3D printed case that we have with an e-ink display. So this is just a Raspberry Pi Zero e-ink display being powered off my laptop. And it's a uh, pretty clever little device and super cute, which I think is driving its popularity. We started playing with this project before the, even the website was up when the developer had just had some code on GitHub and you had to do a lot of work to put it together. Uh, right now, as of October 2019, towards the end here, we have full images available you can just download. And I'll leave links to all this below and to the hardware we use. Raspberry Pi Zeros make it very low cost. So this is a very inexpensive toy to build. And the e-ink display has another advantage of even when you unplug it, it remembers the e-ink display. And also it's just so stinking cute watching it make all the faces as it learns about Wi-Fi environments. And let's talk about what it does a little bit more specifically here. So the Ponocachi is doing AI powered better cap. And what that means is whenever there's a handshake within Wi-Fi, and let's go through and talk a little bit about how that works down here. Whenever there's a Wi-Fi handshake between two devices, between the device connecting and then the device is connecting to, that three-way handshake can be captured. Now, they are using good security. There is a S-nonce and then an A-nonce that are created to create this communication and do it securely so the password itself is not exactly passed across. And, but, even though it's not, if you capture that handshake, that handshake can be tested. And if a known password, such as a dictionary attack, as they call it, if there's a way to reverse engineer that password easily, it can be reverse engineered, but you have to have those cap files. Now, better cap controlled by AI is because, well, there's lots of variations in Wi-Fi in the way it's installed. Therefore, by using the AI tuning system that they have in here, it will go through and learn the environment it's in and think about the best way to do it and constantly improve upon that method based on where you take it. And I see where you take it because the other advantage of being in a Raspberry Pi Zero W is it's very portable. You can plug in a battery and away you go. So now you have an excuse to get out and go for a walk. Definitely uh, if you want to go capture some files on there and start taking a look at it. Now it does not, in case by its name you thought it did, it is not actually cracking Wi-Fi. It does not do that. It just creates the handshake files and the PCAP files. And you can do this yourself uh, with just simply capturing the data and then sorting through it. It's doing a lot of that work for you by only creating the files you need to capture. Now, for those of you that think of this as some type of nefarious tool, it's really not. What this really comes down to is it's a testing tool. It is a tool by which you can test networks. And the, the other side of a lot of security tools is yes, the bad actors and the white hats are going to use these same tools. The tool set actually doesn't change. Your intentions is what changes what happens. So if you wanted to go through and you're doing a pen test uh, for a client and you want to say, hey, I want to just really quickly uh, see if your network has good Wi-Fi passwords. I mean, you could ask them for it, but if you wanted to prove it as in what they refer to as red team testing, uh, this is a handy way to do it, that you can put this in your pocket, wander through, say, all right, and here's what we found from our pen test. By the way, you're not using good passwords. We found out it's password one, two, three, because you can simply just reverse it with a hash and go, all right, you know, this is the password for that. So it's not that these tools or this is a particularly bad thing, but it does kind of gamify it, which is actually kind of a neat thing to do here. And this is why I talk about gamifying. So these are Ponagachis that are also uploading the data and sharing information with each other about who's using them and kind of making it a fun little sport. And you know, this is the scale of the internet. It makes this kind of fun. Uh, you can take and connect this online and push things to the cloud uh, and share all of your findings, which is pretty novel. It makes it, like I said, it, that much more fun. So how do you get started with one? Well, it's pretty simple. First, you're gonna have to get the parts for a Raspberry Pi Zero. I'll leave the link below where to get those. Next, you flash an image and you have the download the latest ponagachi.img file. So there is a file and you can use things like Etcher to install it and just flash it to the SD card. There is a full manual install, which is what we were doing with it prior to this image being available. A little bit harder, but of course you get more customization options if you don't want a pre-built image. Initial configuration, once you go into it, you gotta get the configuration file set up. Now, what I wanna show you now is how we actually get into it. And this is pretty simple, but maybe confusing at first. And I'm doing this on Linux, uh, so bear with me here. If you're on Windows, there is a methodology as well. 
but we're going to go here to my network settings. And we see USB Ethernet plugged in. And this is a feature that once you have this loaded, it shows up as a USB Ethernet adapter. And then we have it here. We're going to go to IPv4. And I've set my address to be 10.0.0.1 with a net mask of 255 and no gateway. Now, to actually get into it, the Ponagachi is at 10.0.0.2. So now we're going to open up a terminal. And we're going to SSH pi at dot zero. So pi at 10.0.0.2.0. And away you go. It will log me in. Now, I already have my SSH keys in is why it didn't prompt me for a password. But now we can do sudo root. By default, there's no root password. Whoop. Sudo su root, sorry. And here we go. If we look here, there is the handshake. So we're in the root directory, and we're going to go over here to the handshakes. And away you go. You can see the networks it's found. And it has the PCAP files. So this is the PCAP files that are a result of the Ponagachi and where you get the files from. Pretty straightforward and simple. Now also running at port 8080, this is essentially how the system works. Now you're seeing what's actually on the screen. So it shows a channel AP, uptime, its name, Sir Scannington, and kick two station, made six new friends, got two new handshakes. There's only a couple networks in here, and it was running for a while, so it's only two new handshakes uh, based on a couple devices I had set up. But I think it's kind of cool how you can see this here. And if you went to just the root of it, there is actually the interface for better cap itself, so you can do your own tuning and dive deeper into it. Now, as the Ponagachi works, it shows a lot of different faces, and there's a lot of detail. The creator of this project has just done an amazing job of documenting it, how things work, and linking to even further reading so you can take in, uh, you can really dive deep into this. Installation, configuration, lots of ways to contribute to the project, lots of fun. And this is not an expensive project to get started, so you can start learning right away. And I think that's one of the important things about Raspberry Pi projects that I've seen a lot of in the community is people without access to a lot of high-end hardware. I mean, you're talking about a project that's just really inexpensive. The Raspberry Pi Zero doesn't cost much. This whole thing is such an easy way to get started and start learning right away. It's all written in Python. It's 100% open source, so you can really play with the code and dive deep into it. We've been playing with it for a little while, and the, one of my technicians who started on the project, I showed it to him. He just thought it was cute. He likes Tamagotchis. He likes Japan, and he says, you know, this just seems like something fun to play with, and it served really as a big learning experience for him. He has a better idea now, one, how to set up Raspberry Pi Zeros. Uh, there is some soldering involved, so that's a whole. That was a whole other little challenge for him um, to get the little e-ink device on there. The configuring, compiling, he went through the whole harder way of doing it, not just downloading an image and putting it on there. But it also was a fun learning experience. And then from there, you can see whether or not you know the Wi-Fi passwords we've used here were whether or not they were adequate. I would say, and there's. Like I said, it's not actually doing anything more than getting the PCAP file. The Raspberry Pi Zero is not strong enough to actually run the hashes against there. But boy, this is just a fun project and probably one of the favorite Raspberry Pi projects we've tried. I also want to try some more with this e-ink display because one of the things I'm going to show right now, and this is the fun feature of e-ink, is watch this. Uh, yeah. All right, it's unplugged. There's no battery or no power. E-ink is... Uh, Oh, there we go, focus, there we go, e-ink. One of the cool things about it is it leaves the last on there. It only electrically refreshes things that are on this display. It does not actually need power for the display. So it stays at the last, it's not running anymore, there's just no battery on this particular model. Um, but it, it will leave the last thing displayed on there, which I think is kind of funny. The other cool thing about it is if you look on the project and we didn't go this way because we're just using it here in the office and with a little, uh, USB powered battery for a little while. They have a whole kit that will put a battery on the back of it that you can charge up and then make it that much more portable. But I'll leave links to all this and you can do some further reading on it. That was kind of the goal is to just talk about the projects. A few people asked me what it is. We had posted about it on Twitter and it's been a fun little toy to play with. Um, the short answer is though, like I said, no, it does not actually uh, reverse engineer any Wi-Fi. It just does the cat files uh, in an intelligent way with some AI. Uh, but boy, it's a fun learning project to learn a lot more about one, how Wi-Fi works when you dive into that side of it and just put together a great little cute Raspberry Pi project. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.